Today I'm going to be repairing a television set that we've worked on before. And this TV is the RCA DETK 185R. This is an 18.5 inch LED television. In a previous video, we replaced the rather unusual power connector. This thing had a proprietary three pin power connector and it made it very hard to find a replacement power supply. And we replaced it with a standard barrel type 5.5 millimeter power connector. And in another video, we had a problem with the DC to DC converter that we repaired. In this video, I'm going to be dealing with the buttons across the top. There's a row of buttons right across the top. And we're having trouble with these buttons. When we press them, we, we, sometimes they don't work. We have to press really hard. We have to press repeatedly. Sometimes they bounce and they double click. And these buttons are just acting like they're wearing out or they're corroded. And we're going to see if we can't fix that problem. Starting with the power button. I have to hit it, you know, two or three times before it finally. There we go. The volume button, the volume up seems to work. The volume down button, that's not responding at all. In fact, it actually shut the TV set off. Channel button up looks okay. Other way, the channel down button's not working at all. And menu. Menu also doesn't seem to want to work. Source button, I have to hit it a couple times. Okay, so we're having problems. Power button. Channel down, volume down. Those are all not working properly. Okay, so we're having a whole problems with several buttons here. So we need to open this up and have a look. First, we're going to take off the stand. It's held on with these four screws here. Okay, with the four screws removed, the stand comes right off. With the stand removed, we're ready to remove the back. Now the back is held on with eight screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The rest of these screws you can ignore for this particular job. These hold the boards on internally, but the back itself is held on with just those eight screws. And we'll go ahead and remove those. Now that all of the eight screws have been removed, we can now remove the back from the front. Now, in addition to the eight screws, the back is held onto the front by two sets of clips, one on each side. They're located about here and here, and here and here, and you have to basically pry it loose. My tool of choice is a simple flathead screwdriver. Okay, one side is loose, now the other side. This is coming apart fairly easy, probably because I've had it apart before. If you're taking yours apart for the first time, it might not be so easy. Okay, that's all of them. Now, looking inside, we do have quite a few cables connecting the front to the back. We don't have to be really concerned about those. The only one we're really concerned about is the ones connecting the buttons. And we have a single connector. Putting it upside down, we expose the button board and this one cable supplying it. Now here's our button board and here's the cable from the rest of the TV. We just kind of need to work this out a little bit. Okay, out comes that connector. Now the board is held in with two screws, one on either side. We'll go ahead and take those screws out. Okay, with both of the screws out, we can now remove the button board. Now it's held in with two little clips in here. You have to sort of work around them a little bit. Bend the button board towards you a little bit. Okay, out it comes. 
there is the button board. Now there's more than one version of this button board. There's a different version that has two screws in it, like one here and one here. Those screws have to come out. This version, everything's just held in with these little clips. You need to kind of carefully bend them a little bit and get this board out. Okay, I've got them kind of all bent a little bit. And out it comes. Okay. Here is our button board. This is the alternate version of the button board. The connector is located in the middle of the board instead of to the side. And in addition to the clips holding the board into this carrier, it has two screws. So those screws will have to be removed before pulling the board out. However, the buttons on the inside are exactly the same and they fail in exactly the same way. Now, here's our button board on the bench. But we have uh, seven buttons and each one is held on with four points. We know we had a problem with the volume down button and the channel down button and the power button for sure. Now you'll notice some of these buttons actually have rust on them. Now I acquired these television sets from a recycling center and I think these things probably got rained on. And maybe that's one of the reasons we're having so much trouble with the buttons. It's probably a little corrosion on the inside. Now, in your case, you might just have one bad button. These buttons do wear out with time. The ones that are used the most are the ones that wear out first. So probably the power button would tend to go first. And then probably the channel button second. But you might only need to replace one. I'm going to replace a minimum of three. Now you can try to spray a little contact cleaner inside of these buttons. You can, If you spray right between the button and the case there, you probably get a little bit inside. But I've never had a lot of good luck trying to revive these buttons with the contact cleaner. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace them. Now you can acquire these buttons really cheap. I mean, I bought a whole bag full of them here for like, I don't know, two, three dollars, something like that. These buttons literally cost pennies. So as long as you've gone through all the work of taking it apart, probably easier just to replace the buttons. That way you know they're fixed. If you go to eBay and you search for six by six by five millimeter four pin, you'll come up with dozens of vendors selling these switches. They're very inexpensive, particularly if you order them directly from China. If you order them from a U.S. vendor, you'll get them a little quicker. It's going to take some soldering and desoldering skills to do this. So you're going to need a, a soldering iron and some knowledge of how to use it. I've gone ahead and desoldered the first switch. You want to be careful working around this plastic connector because you can easily damage that. With just a slip of the soldering iron, you can melt that pretty darn fast. Okay, so the first switch has come out. I'm going to use this little plastic micrometer to measure the size of the switch. Six millimeters by six millimeters by five millimeters. Six by six by five. So when you order these, you need to order six by six by five millimeter momentary switch with four pins and flat mount. Okay, I've completed removing four of these buttons. Volume down, channel down. I also took out the menu button and the power button. And here they are. And here we have the four replacement switches. And I'm going to go ahead and solder those in. Now, before I solder these new switches in, one thing I do is I, I straighten up these pins a little bit. See, they have a big, they have a bend in them, and that puts a lot of spring tension. On. It, that puts a lot of spring tension between the contact and the hole, and that makes it a lot harder to desolder if you ever have to take this out again. So if you straighten these out a little bit and just sort of take some of that spring tension off of them, if you ever have to take them out again, you'll find it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, I've finished 
soldering in the new ones. You can see the difference. The new ones are shiny, 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 shiny. And these are the old ones with rust on them. We'll just check them all like this. We'll just check all the switches like this before we go ahead and reinsert this uh, circuit board back into the TV. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the button board back into its little housing here. Get it so those teeth are covering it first, and then we should be able to just pop it right in. Now we put the button board back into the TV. Snap it under those little snaps there. Put our two screws back in. Okay, just screwed in those two screws there and there. And now we connect the connector. And we slide the front over the back. And snap them back together. Now the back is snapped on. We just have to put in those eight screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll go ahead and do that now. All eight screws have now been put back in and now we just need to put the stand back on. And the stand is held on by these four screws. We'll go ahead and put those four screws back in. Okay, the four screws are back in and the stand is reconnected. We'll now reconnect our video and audio signals. I'm using an external DVD player as the source of audio and video. And we will reconnect the external power supply brick. Okay, we'll go ahead and test out our buttons. We'll hit the power button first. One click, and it's working. Good. Hit the menu button. Now with the menu up, the volume buttons will move the menu sideways. So volume up and volume down appear to be working normally. And channel up and down will move the menu up and down. Channel down, channel up. Source. And we can move the source up and down with channel up and down. Up. And down. Perfect. So all the buttons are working normally now. So if you have a TV like this and the buttons go bad, you can see it's a pretty straightforward fix. All you need is a soldering iron and some soldering skills, and the replacement buttons are really inexpensive. Okay, well, that's it.